Welcome to the music broadcast, and as they say in music broadcasting, let's do that broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> we just finished watching the <laughs> uh, Chance the Rapper SNL skit that was on this last week. Yeah, was it? It was this Saturday. Yeah, and yeah, yeah that was that's the funniest thing I've seen in a while. So good, man! It's such a funny stereotype on both sides of mm-hmm. like. Like, they even mentioned, like, oh, the baby is going to be a future Rangers fan. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, like, that's so, like, hockey parent. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, he's going to be a Leafs fan or whatever, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then typical, they just stuck a black guy in the middle of it, and he's just <laughs> like, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this week, I'm joined by my co-host, Owen Viragos. What's up, everyone? And I want to start with a question for you. Cool. Let's hear okay. it. If you could take a look at any Pro Tools session of any song... What song would it be? Ooh. It can be past or present. It doesn't have to be like actually mixed in a Pro Tools session, but just see all the tracks, all the EQ, all the reverb, <clears throat> where all the levels are. What track? What track would it be? I think one of the reasons this song is so impressive is because it wasn't using Pro Tools. And this is a very cliche answer to say, but. Is uh, it the Beatles? No, I'd say like Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'd good. be like a wicked session to really like dive into mm-hmm. and see, because Beatles would be insane too. But that mm-hmm. almost would like that'd be that'd be a whole other thing as yeah. well. I would love to look at Beatles too. Like, there's a million sessions I could say, but like really seeing the really seeing how the whole song of uh, Bohem- Bohemian Rhapsody is like sort of piece together mm-hmm. yep. would be super interesting to me like i'd really want to pick like a really epic song like that yep. that has a lot of instrumentation and uh just seeing how they placed it would be really interesting mm-hmm. but that's the thing like that wasn't done on pro tools mm-hmm. which makes that song that much more cool and impressive who was it that came by that dan invited that showed us all the michael jackson no the guy who makes michael jackson you know the guest speaker that Oh, not Michael Jackson himself, but the guy who had the Michael yeah. Jackson sessions. Uh, you, that you, was do you remember his name? Stu Brawley. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Stu Brawley came by our class and showed us a couple. And one of the songs that he showed us was um, the guitar parts for Bohemian Rhapsody. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and that was that was something. Oh yeah, he did have that. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's very true. Yeah, he had some of the uh, outtakes of the guitar, some alternate mm-hmm. guitar. Uh, solos and stuff like that Mm -hmm. yeah there's just so many layers yeah yep super cool super cool what about you would be one um i was trying to figure it out um i'll just give another one just while you're thinking uh like a bone iver yeah song would be insane how do you how do you say his name oh sorry bon iver bon iver yeah i've always wondered about that yeah it's bon iver um I still to this day will say Bone Iver bon. <laughs> yeah. or Bon Heaver or something like it's it's uh, but yeah sorry I've mm-hmm. heard his name quite a bit now recently but it was one of those things where you read a lot before you mm-hmm. see it yep so I had you already have a way that you say it in your head first but um, yeah some of the cool like uh, Creeks I would love to see like the session for his song Creeks on his last album like just all the cool vocoder. Like, he has all these, like, super cool layers that are vocal layers, but they're being uh, manipulated really, like, mm-hmm. it's super cool. Yep. I think it'd be, like, I would love to hear all that guy's tricks. Yep. Yeah, my answer might be a bit selfish, but I just want to see, like, the favorite song from my favorite band, Need to Breathe. Probably, like, Money and Fame would be a good one. It has, like, everything in it. Yeah. Horns, guitars. Like they're a rock, a pop rock, not pop rock, folk rock, I guess. Cool. Band. Yeah, jumping into some news. Um, Owen, you got anything for us? Yeah, I had a, just a couple things I was going to talk about. It wouldn't be, a, wouldn't be a podcast if I didn't bring up someone's death, right? <laughs> so, uh, one that's been in the news a lot <clears throat> over the past week is uh, Lil Peep, who... Uh, Rest in peace. He died. Um, it was just a few days ago now of a overdose, and uh, it's it has it's had you know the social media by storm, uh, the hip hop community by storm. Even though he, I don't think he was the most relevant uh, 
in, not to take away anything from Lil Peep or anything. I know a lot of people are still mourning his death, but um, not a name that I would say was like the most relevant until his death, which is sad because of how he did die. It was kind of, he was, he was like a, uh, like George Walter actually said this to me. He, he kind of like meant the same thing to his fans that like Kurt Cobain meant to his fans. Mm-hmm. So uh, like in the same angsty way, troubled way and stuff like that. So it's really sad to see. And it's kind of created a divide even between um, the community of, of hip hop because uh, it's, it's kind of, there's been this ongoing, people think that the generation gap is just between sometimes like old music and then new genres like pop or hip hop or something like that, you know? But even within these genres, there's a whole other generation gap and divide. So there's like the older rappers that like Jay-Z or, you know, Nas and stuff that they see, Eminem, they see these new cats like um, really portraying this like kind of very druggy lifestyle and uh, saying, hey, that's not what hip hop was about. You know, we were the hustlers. We were the ones that were, you know, making money off those kind of people, blah, 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 and stuff. And then you have like the younger people being like, well, what's better? You know, it's all the same thing. It's all drugs. It's all bad. So it's kind of created this weird divide again, and even just about like subject matter and hip hop between the two. Um, Do you think other genres really suffer from like, and this totally veered away from Lil P, but this is just to kind of get to my next topic because it created this generation gap. Like, do you think Mm -hmm. that's kind of evident in all music styles? Like, I feel like hip hop really has had troubles and doesn't get the same respect as other genres because we don't necessarily appreciate and respect our past. Mm -hmm. Like, you'll see, like, I'm sure, I don't know if this video exists, but there's got to be a video of, like, John Mayer jamming with B.B. King, you know? Yeah. But there's, you're not going to see a new artist like Lil Peep, for example, like, on a song Mm -hmm. or, like, in the studio with Jay-Z or something, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, do you think that, that respect is something that's just kind of like lost in hip hop or is it in country? Do you see it evident in like rock music or in country music? I definitely think there's a lot of respect for the old guys in quotes. And even though country music has strayed so far from that to what it is now, there, there definitely are those old guys, but I don't think, <clears throat> Do they have the same respect for the new generation, the older guys? Because like it I, sounds I, like there's respect for mm-hmm. the yep. the forefathers, yep. but like, do you think you know? I honestly have no clue. Mm-hmm. It's funny that in the pop world, there's almost none of that mm-hmm. because pop is so recent and so not recent, but it's weird to say that someone was a pop artist back in the fifties. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like, yeah. because... The Beatles are a pop band. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Pop is always changing. Mm-hmm. So I think in the pop genre, that almost doesn't exist at all. Right. And it's pop is like, I guess, obviously very commercial. So it might be a less artistic and more like mm-hmm. actual like marketplace share that you're fighting over as opposed to like artistic integrity like i don't know yeah but um anyways i guess just to wrap that up uh rest in peace rmp mm-hmm. or, sorry r- rest <laughs> in peace r.i.p rest in peace little peep and uh yeah i hope uh the young kids uh you know who saw him as inspiration also like kind of heed this as a bit of a uh cost- cautionary tale so uh yeah st- stay safe out there soundcloud rappers I have some news about YouTube and Ticketmaster. They've teamed up, and I will just read you the article off uh, VentureBeat because I don't want to miss anything. Um, So while Spotify, Apple Music, and similar audio streaming services are popular conduits for finding new and old music, YouTube is often the port of call for those seeking a little visual stimulation to go with their tunes. Um, starting from today, YouTube will surface U.S. tour dates for hundreds of artists directly below their videos. As the video streams, uh, u- users can tap view upcoming shows and scroll through 
all the artists' schedules, live performances. Um, if fans want to buy tickets, however, they will be whisked off to Ticketmaster's <laughs> website. So this will be like in the info section of YouTube videos? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I actually have, um, <coughs> they have a screen grab of what it looks like. So they just have like a little, a little bar right below the video that you can see. And then it also... Sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sweet. Um, That's really cool. Who wrote that story? It's like a for sure thing, Incredible mm -hmm. Source? Yeah, Venture Beat. Yep. Nice. Yep. Um... Those outside the U.S. won't see any of the live show information, um, and Canada too. Hmm, mm, that's interesting. That's one thing that's kind of difficult about YouTube. There's a lot of videos that are restricted in mm -hmm. like some countries and stuff like that because of copyright and all that other mm -hmm. stuff. But something like this seems more <clears throat> less about copyright, more just about. Mm -hmm. making sure that YouTube's kind of getting credit for doing this. You know, like YouTube's not going to like make this all super accessible just so they don't get anything extra for doing it. I don't feel like, mm -hmm. cause YouTube's already like the number one streaming service. Yeah. Everyone forgets that like YouTube is above Apple music. Like they're not technically like streaming in the typical sense of streaming, but it's still like the number one place where people go to stream music. Yep. Like, so I think they're just kind of really trying to find ways to capitalize on that. And that's mm -hmm. a super smart way is connecting like uh, where the artist is making basically no money like yeah. off YouTube yep. to actually being like, here, here's how you can support them. Mm -hmm. Go see them here. Yep. I think that would be really cool for uh, smaller artists too. Yeah. You know, sure. like just immediately get them in contact. Like I think that's super important about uh, independent artists is just making everything super connected to each other, like promoting your... Uh, YouTube page on your Instagram or promoting your mm -hmm. Twitter on your SoundCloud or, you know, whatever, like just uh, making sure that you're connected as well as you can be with your audience mm -hmm. is like super important. Yep. So that's a really cool way to do it. Mm -hmm. and I'm surprised that doesn't even exist already because I feel mm -hmm. like that's just where it's going. Yeah, this article came out, yeah, November 14th oh, of cool. this year. Yeah, very recent. Mm -hmm. So. What does it say? Like, hopefully by 2018, that'll be kind of... Um, at the end of the article, it said YouTube's planning on releasing this internationally. Nice. As well. Dope. <clears throat> um, in all of the classes that we've... Not all of them. In the vast majority of the classes, we've always been told live shows are where artists make all their money. Um, the reason being, um, an artist actually gets 75% of the money made on a ticket sale, yeah. which is such a big difference from the 6% around that they make on album sales or on royalties. So streaming is even smaller. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it just keeps on getting the bottom line, you know, yeah. but, uh, 75%, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. And people, I feel like ticket prices for concerts keep going up too. And that might have something to do just with like the secondary market, like ticket resellers and stuff like that. Like, so, but still, it just shows people are willing to pay a lot more for live shows than they have in the past, even recently. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have one last article for you. Um, if you were to name a company, have a company, create a company, let's say, yeah, but you wanted to add a little twist to it. A little um, almost homage to a rap group that you really like. What what would you call it? Your company. A company that I wanted. To a have. business, yeah, a business. What's the business do? Um, walk dogs. And I just want to have a homage. To yeah, them. yeah, a little like play on words almost. Walking dogs. To a rap group. Homage yep. to a rap group. Walking yep. dogs. Mm. Well, I'd have to bring up Snoop Dogg somehow. Yep. That'd be a good one. I don't know. <laughs> I'll just tell you. I'll just I'll tell you. I'll snoop your dogs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's, what's the story, man? Wu-Tang Clan is suing a dog walking outfit for their title, 
the name of their uh, business is Woof Tang Clan. And they're suing them for a copyright breach. That's so funny. The company who claims walk the, they walk the illest group of dogs in New York City have been targeted by producer, rapper, RZA in... RZA. RZA. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> in a trademark dispute. Um, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Very funny. Yep. Woof Tang. <laughs> That's funny. Woof it's like, clan. I'm going to make a... I'm going to make a... One of their songs is called Protect Your Neck, and I'll just name a scarf company after that. <laughs> Protect yeah. Your Neck. Yeah. And then I'll have... Rizza coming after my neck. Jeez. That's, oh my gosh, this little dog company must be shaking right yeah. now. Woof Tang Clan uh, is owned by Marty Ketchon, who told the New York Daily News he was aware of the challenge as well as walking the illest group of dogs in New York City. He offers dog sitting services, saying his staff are courteous and responsible. Oh, jeez. As long as we're in agreement that Nas Illmatic is the greatest album of all time. Uh. <laughs> Uh, he was also selling T-shirts that depict dogs on classic hip-hop albums, uh, <laughs> <laughs> album covers by groups from De La Soul and the late Wu Tang Clan members. He probably is loving that, like mm-hmm. RZA. I would, I'd get a kick out of that RZA trying to sue me. I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's funny, man. That's super. Funny. I'm surprised I haven't seen it. I think I've heard it somewhere. We sell shirts at my work called. Uh, Actually, even on, look at my laptop right here. It's There's a brand called Dogs, or Rappers with Puppies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, like, we have, like, shirts with literally just rappers with puppies. That's ASAP Rocky with a dog. <laughs> and it's so funny. Um, the one last thing I was going to talk about was just Genius.com. I'll get, just get through this really quick. Um, I was reading this uh, this story on... Digiday.com. Uh, Genius plans to double its 17-person video team in 2018. So they're still a fairly small team, uh, but they're a big company right now, doing lots of cool things. And there's someone that just started out. It was actually it was originally called RapGenius.com. Mm-hmm. So it was a place for you to upload uh, lyrics and annotate them, give them the double entendre meanings and stuff, because that's what's so big in uh, rap music and stuff in their lyrics is the double meanings and plays on words and stuff like that. So it basically broke that all down for you. You could just click on the lyric. And they've really been uh, capitalizing on this. <clears throat> so they've been actually just bringing in artists to do almost interviews and verify the lyrics and actually give their own breakdowns as opposed to just online users uh, giving their interpretations. And uh, it's grown into even bringing in producers to explain how they made the beat. So they're really kind of almost, <laughs> almost getting into... Like, this is kind of like our territory exactly. They're just trying to kind of make this uh, behind-the-scenes information kind of, like, available to you in, in the open so people who are super interested in um, wanting to know all that stuff. Like, some people are just there to listen to the music and get on with it, but uh, I personally like hearing all the stories behind it, how it was made, and how the song was concepted, all that stuff. So um, I think they're uh, they're doing it the right way. They're going to start doing... Uh, longer form content for services like TV and YouTube mm-hmm. and streaming services. So, um, I think they're they're pretty cool. Have you ever used Genius.com? No, I don't. Very often. Have oh. you ever seen the videos with the people with like the yellow background? This is like a very like. T- oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. That yeah, right that's there. there. That's Genius.com. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. Yeah, I've watched a couple of those. Yep. yep. And. Uh, so yeah, that's what they've been doing. And like I think it's really cool they've kind of like seen this niche and they're just like, you know, going right for it. Mm-hmm. And it's cool. So I'm excited to see what they'll do. What they'll be doing. I'll probably be talking about them. And they're even a good source for information. Like Genius is cool. Mm-hmm. They're a news site. Um, this isn't sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> they're a news site. They're a, they're a, a lyric site. Everything. It's super cool. Yep. Moving on to the song breakdown that we're doing this week. We're gonna be taking a look at Watch Me by Jaden Smith off of his 2017 brand new release, Sire. Um, it's released on November 17th, 2017. It's lit. <laughs> it's lit. <laughs> Do you know uh, where the album title Sire came from? 
No, actually, no. Um, it's just his middle name. Uh, Jaden Christopher <laughs> Sire Smith. Sire. Yeah. It's like a formal sir. S-Y-R-E. Yeah. We wanted to talk about this song because it is so similar to Black Skinhead by Kanye West off of his 2013 album, Yeezus. The original was produced by Daft Punk, which is kind of interesting. And then uh, along uh, with the list of many, many other producers, mm-hmm. um, there was also included Loopy, Fiasco, and No ID no as ID. well. Any, is That's Rick Rubin? Credit. Hmm? Rick Rubin credited? Mm-hmm. No? No. Nope. Um, he's normally like an executive producer. Mm-hmm. I think Daft Punk had the biggest part in Kanye's track. Um, Definitely, yeah. So what do you think about the original and what do you think about the quote-unquote uh, copy? Do, have you seen other people referencing the similarities too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's... <laughs> it's it's a thing. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, <clears throat> to me, I, I've been enjoying the Jaden Smith album actually. Like I, I uh it's been like an it's been a pleasant listen. Like I don't know, like there's some parts where he's coming off a bit too like trying to be deep or pretentious a bit, but overall, like sonically, I think the album's really, really cool. He does a lot of cool stuff on it. Um that song on its own, you know, without Black Skinhead existing, like I'd probably really like that song. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a cool song. But when the whole time I'm kind of just thinking, like, wait, is he, is he covering Black Skinhead? Is this a remix? Is this what's going on here? Yeah. And then I just remember like how intense and powerful like that rhythm is yep. in the Black Skinhead, and it's how it worked so much for like what Kanye was trying to get across at the time that Jesus came out, and how powerful like Kanye's screams are in that song. Like mm-hmm. just the whole Daft Punk's production, like the like, like that's, yeah. I don't know. That's on, you can't duplicate something like that. Like that is such raw emotion. Like I've, I've really, that album has grown on me so much over the years mm-hmm. and that song like is still super powerful. So I think it's kind of like, I don't think Jaden was trying to rip off the song, yep. but because it has a whole, totally different vibe to it it's much more like uh light yeah I'd say light exactly yep. like just not so uh intense mm-hmm. like black skinhead is intense when you yep. hear that song like it kind of demands your attention this one's kind of more like yeah you know i can mm-hmm. i'll listen to it um sire yeah. as an album was actually received pretty well by yeah. the critics um got 66 out of 100 uh on metacritic um, 8 out of 10 on Exclaim, 4.5 out of 5 on Hip Hop DX, mm-hmm. 3 out of 5 stars on NME, 5.1 five, five out of 10 on Pitchfork, mm. and 4 to 5 stars uh, by The Post. Okay. Kyle Eustace of Hip Hop DX praised the album's creativity, production, and commended Jaden's stylistic progressions and improvement from his last releases. My the music critic I watch <laughs> give it a four out of ten. <laughs> like the needle drop, Anthony Fantano. If you ever heard of that guy, very funny music critic. But he thought it was just so whitewashed and like everything. I thought it was generally pretty creative. Um, I'm sure he had a huge team working with him. Like it's not like Jaden's, you know, playing every mm-hmm. note on that and stuff. But yep. um, I like how the first part of the album, like the song. Together it spells blue, but it's yeah. like B L U E. That's interesting. Yeah. The first I, four tracks are titled each one letter spelling blue. It's cool because it like automatically makes you think like, all right, that's blue part one, that's blue part, you know, like instead of writing it out, part one, part two. And I kind of liked how those told the story and kind of went into each other really cool. <clears throat> um, I, I generally thought the album had a really good flow to it. Like, I haven't, like, just listened to it back-to-back a bunch of times, but, like, when I do listen to a few songs in order, like, they all flow together nicely. Like, it's mm-hmm. a good, um, like, balance. And, yeah, definitely better than, like, stuff I've heard. Like, I remember, like, one of the first things Jaden put out that I listened to is maybe, like, a Pumped Up Kicks remix. Oh, okay. Like, all the other mm-hmm. kids with the fun. And then he just, like, did, like, a rap verse over the verse. And uh, he rapped in Never Say Never, right? By Justin Bieber. 
Is he on that song? I think he might be. He's definitely the star of the movie, which the song uh, featured. <laughs> um, let me. Yep. Justin Bieber, Never Say Never, featuring Jaden Smith. Wow. I can't say I've ever listened to that whole song. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't expect you to have. But that makes sense. That's cool. That's cool for, like, Jaden. Like, Jaden Smith was on the last uh, Tyler album. Uh, he had that song Pothole, which I really like. Um, I liked the singles leading up to the album, too. Like, I was actually kind of anticipating it a bit, especially with some of the promo leading up to it. Um, like, I actually liked the song Batman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yep. And Fallen, like, such a weird video, but, like, cool stuff. Like, I don't know, like, it's kind of interesting to see, like, someone who was, like, Jaden Smith right out of the womb was destined for fame, right? Like, he came out of Jada Pinkett Smith. Like, he is going to be famous. (laughs) So it's kind of cool seeing what he's doing with it and how he's approaching it because it's... uh, it's hard. Like, I'm sure it's, it's it's a lot of pressure, you know? Like, I'm jealous of the kid, and he gets to do whatever he wants. But, like, to live up to, you know, the highly highly uh, critical success of Will Smith's rap career. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I love, I love Will Smith. I love Will Smith. How do you think the energy and intensity is created in both of these songs? What do you think... How do you think they do it, like production-wise? What are what are all the little secrets and techniques that you can think of, or stuff that you use in your own? I feel like that song would have started with the just the drums. Mm-hmm. I yep. think it's just all about the rhythm, for the intensity. Yep. Um, like again, like Jaden Smith doesn't necessarily feel intense to me because the drums are pulled back a bit. Mm-hmm. They're not as hard of drums. Yep. Um, also like the, the little sounds in the back, like, (sighs) Mm -hmm. the, the breathing. Yeah, for sure. The breathing that's in there. Um, all the super, like, they're probably like sawtooth synths and stuff. Like, um, it's just dirty. Like Mm -hmm. I, it's almost like they combined very, I want to say the drum beat mm -hmm. sounds like a war drum beat. Yeah. And all the yells, it's very Aboriginal? Oh like, uh, almost Is that, that's the one you were avoiding. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like tribal? I don't I don't want to say basic, but like raw, powerful, intense. It's like very human. So you're saying they combine that very, very human, human element yeah, with super industrial. This, yeah, the the synth. Yeah. And that like almost conflict difference between the two is very interesting. That's very true. Um, the tempo, I think, helps a lot. Mm. Like, that, that's always important. Fast tempo. Yeah. Um, the drums sound huge, yeah. which is uh, helped by the reverb mm. as well. Yeah. Uh, I think, in all honesty, like, I feel like... 90% of like that song's intensity is literally how Kanye was feeling That's at that time. That's what I was going to say too. Like his performance is yeah, captivating. When I look back on like where his headspace was at that time, like that's literally how he felt in sound. Like mm-hmm. that song, like he that was yeah, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Like he was literally like that's cool how you said like oh like going to war or something cuz like at that time, like, he felt like he was at war with, like, the fashion industry and stuff. Like, he was had all these walls around him. So, yeah, he was running over that mountain. Jeez. Jesus. Yep. The S- salute to Jesus. Game, the game we're going to play this week is yep. a little bit different. Um, <laughs> Owen, why don't you just go and type in which music genre are you on Google? And we're both going to take a test, and we're both going to find out which genre of music we are. <laughs> You're kidding me. It's the very first one. It's on uh, Zimbo.com. Okay. Zimbio. Zimbio. <clears throat> Begin quiz. Yep. Okay. Question number one. You're getting tickets to a concert. Where are your seats? A private box, general admission, the lawn, center stage, or center, center lodge. Not too close, not too far. So we both tell our answers. Yeah, well, I'm normally general, general admission, I feel like. That's because I'm broke. 
I'm usually... I guess I'm center lodge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... I did center lodge. I'm usually, usually on the second bowl, mm. if it's a, a, an arena. Yeah. Okay. Choose a beverage. Jack did, and Coke. Wait, did you do center? Mm-hmm. I okay. did the bottom one. Okay. Jack and Coke, beer, vodka soda, or Red Bull? Oh. Mine's Red Bull, for sure. Because <laughs> I don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm Jack and Coke, but that sounds so country to me. I feel like I'm going to like, but beer is country. I don't know. I'm going to say Jack and Coke. Yeah, beer is definitely country. Okay, pick a movie. Almost Famous, Hustle and Flow, Sid and Nancy, Katy Perry, Part of Me, Cool Runnings. I went with Cool Runnings. I love that movie. Almost Famous is probably my top five favorite movies. Question number four. Before running out to your next show, what do you grab on your way to the door? Uh, a six-pack, leather jacket, tunes for the drive, a joint, cell phone, anything that glows. <sighs> it's going to say I'm some hippie, bro. I know <laughs> it. My favorite movie is almost famous. I would bring it. No, just <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dad. I know you watch these. Um, Mine would be a cell phone. I'm going to do the safe one, a cell phone. I don't leave the house with a cell phone. If you could be a member of any music group, which would you be? <sighs> Earth, Wind, and Fire, Heim, Fleetwood Mac, The Wailers, Black Flag. It's all about the DJs. I go with Haim. I had to listen to your music. Vinyl, Vinyl cassette, cassette, CD, MP3. MP3. I know, it's true. But I do really like the sound of vinyl. Do you have a vinyl player, Kai? No, not at home. My fiance does. Oh, okay. We have a few vi- We have some vinyl here. I was thinking we should add like a vinyl... I have those vinyl frames. We should put one right there. That's a good idea, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I listened to... I'm saying MP3. An old Johnny Cash record and an old Beach Boys record on vinyl. Ooh. Ah, uh, yeah. Was it Pet Sounds? Their yes. classic? Yes, it was, yeah. yeah. Nice. Yep. Yeah, I listened to that when I was in Toronto this weekend. It's but just on the drive. The majority is MP3, so I guess I'll go with that one. Pick a musical... Rock of Ages, Hairspray, Dream Girls, American Idiot. What's a musical? I liked American Idiot. The only one I that saw I American the only one that Idiot. I know is Hairspray, so I'm going with that one. When I was like 11 or something, like my dad took us to uh, New York and I saw American Idiot mm-hmm. and it was really cool. Yeah. There was like there was a sex scene in it. <laughs> like a sex scene on stage. Like, I don't think they actually did it, but, like, they might as, <laughs> they might as well I, 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 don't, I don't think like, they, <laughs> they would have. But, okay. um, Question number eight. Choose an instrument. Piano, guitar, percussion, synth. This is... Why, this is actually a hard game, bro. I'm going with piano. <sighs> it's like you know you know which, which instrument's going to get you which genre. I know, and that's the problem. <laughs> and you don't want to choose it. Oh, and if you get country, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to laugh so hard. Just to like balance out with some of my other answers, I'm going to say synth. <laughs> <laughs> what is your ideal day off? Going to the beach with a cold beer and some herbal refreshments. Downing a few beers in a parking lot before jumping into a mosh pit. Practicing for your next light show. Ooh. Cruising down the street, sipping on gin and juice. Sipping on gin and juice. <laughs> or going to the Way mall. Back. Uh, out, of, out of those options, mine's probably going to the mall. I go to the mall on my days I work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Cruising down the street, sipping on gin and juice. I'll say that. I like cruising. Really? You you in, you endorse drinking and driving, <laughs> Owen? <laughs> I've actually never drank and drive. Question. Well, like the friends are yeah, yeah, friends yeah, in yeah. the back Quen- at the gin and juice. Come on. <laughs> question 10. Final question. Choose a lyric to live by. The player's going to play. The hater's going to hate. I'm just going to shake it off. One love, one heart, let's get together and feel all right. You can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you might find... Okay, Kai, I need you, need you to restart these and sing them. I, d- I don't know most of these songs. The player's <clears> gonna <throat> play, 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 play. Okay. And then the other and one. And I'm not singing Anaconda, ever. <laughs> you can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you just might find... Get watching. <laughs> who, who sings that song? Stones. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> Love will tear us apart. That's a sad lyric to live by. 
My anaconda don't want none unless you got buns, hun. That's also a bad My lyric anaconda lyric, don't. My anaconda. <laughs> or the last one, who needs lyrics anymore? It's all about the beat. I'm going with the first one. Player's going to play. Hater's going to hate. I'm going with third from the bottom. I'm just going to shake it off. Okay. I'm not going to show you my answer. My, you anac- my you anaconda answer? don't want none unless you got buns, huh? Okay, I guess. What's your answer? Pop. So is mine. <laughs> really? Yeah. Like, totally. You are always in style and stay up to date on the latest trends. Fun is your middle name, and you love to bring the party wherever you go. Much like that catchy, chart-topping hit you can't get out of your head. You leave an impression on those around you. <laughs> I'd say accurate, because, like, if you think about it... I think that's good questions too. Like that's actually a pretty cool. Because yeah, it kind of like, wasn't actually bad. First of all, it kind of like sees what type of person you are, mm-hmm. and then sees how old fashioned you are by asking about how you listen to your music. Yep. And then, what's most important to you? Like if you your phone's most important, or you know, like. Yep. I bet I could make. If I knew all of the outcomes, like because if there's no. If there's no like rap one, I, like I wouldn't be able to find out how to make rap one. But I bet you could retake that and make mm-hmm. yourself whatever genre you want. Yep, yep. That's cool, man. We're pop. We're popular. Mm-hmm. Yep. We're popping. We're gonna end the show with some music recommendations. Um, I'm gonna start with um, a recommendation to listen to "Attention" and "How Long" by Charlie Puth. Um, it's off of his unreleased album "Voice Notes." They're both uh, two lead singles that were released in April 21st and October 5th. Sweet. Um, the album's coming out on January 19th, nice. 2018. For anyone who doesn't know, lead singles are singles that came out before an album that they're attached to gets released. So, like, Jaden Smith had uh, Fallen, was one of his lead singles that he released in December of 2016. I really like the songs. I Yeah, I just like them. Um, <laughs> that's, that's why I recommend it to them. Also, um, the, the stuff he does with his bass line is very interesting in both the songs. Um, Sorry, who's the artist again? Charlie Puth. Oh, right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, the way they're so connected to the melody of the song is interesting and not something that's usually done. For bass, With a yeah. bass line, yeah. That's very cool. I would just recommend the song I've been listening to by uh, a band called Boy Pablo. Their album came out, it was May, but um, I've just been kind of stumbling upon it and I'm really liking it. Uh, the song I'd recommend is either Every Time or I'm Really Tired, This Day Sucks. <laughs> either, either of those songs I'm really enjoying. Uh, Every Time has a cool video for it, you kind of get the vibe of the whole group. And it's just kind of laid back, mm-hmm. uh, like, yeah, alternative, cool Sweet. stuff. Check it out, Boy Pablo. Yeah, and that'll do it for another episode of the Music Podcast. Thanks for listening. Um, Owen, do you have Twitter yet? Twitter? Twitter? Do you have Twitter yet? Oh, yeah. You said you were getting one. Don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> ask one for you guys next week. One day. Don't worry. One day. But yeah, you can follow us on Twitter, the Music Podcast, on Instagram as well, iTunes, Apple, uh, yeah, Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcasts, iTunes. Google we're Play. Out, we're out there. Yep. Thanks for listening. Thanks, guys. Peace.